We work so hard as business owners and especially as women in this day and age pioneering our way to the success that we're creating. And what I have to ask is, are you utilizing the soul of your marriage in the power and intimacy there to actually manifest your reality? Do you even know that there's power there that you can tap into and have you tapped into it? I'm Melissa Keenan, CEO and owner of Coaching with Melissa Keenan. I help women and couples create the intimacy of their dreams. And um, I think that this is a subject that very few are willing to explore. Hi, Charlene. Thanks for saying hi. If you're here and you're watching, please say hi in the comments. I'd love to hear where you're watching from. This is such a big group, so it's always exciting to see where people are watching from. Let's, um, let's break this down a little bit, right? Um, if you're watching this, my guess is that you have a deep desire to manifest something big and powerful. And you're also in a partnership or a marriage or a strong, committed relationship. And you know there's a depth there that you want to access more often. Is that right? Um, let me know. Let me know if that describes you. Are you the kind of person who has a big vision? Maybe you've already made some big strides in your business, or maybe you're just beginning and you're married and you know there's a depth there. There's a power there that maybe you haven't tapped into fully. Um, you know, Napoleon Hill talks about this in Think and Grow Rich. Raise your hand if you have read Think and Grow Rich. Who are my Think and Grow Rich fans out there? Oh, yay. Hi, Dee Dee. Um, Awesome. That's great, Charlene. Um, in Think and Grow Rich, he talks about the emotion of sex. So fascinating. So there's this chapter. Did you know that it talks about this? Because many of the co newer copies of this book don't even contain um, this chapter. It's chapter 11. And they've just kind of started to uh, recreate these um, copies of, of this you know, really old book. And they've just eliminated this chapter because there was a chapter all about the relationship between sex and our ability to be successful. And it's like mind blowing because you're reading along and then you get to this part about like all this stuff about sex. And I know if you're anything like me, I was reading through this and for the first time I'm like, like, I was like, oh, like, yeah, 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 you know, like, um, law of attraction and okay, I get, I'm getting this, right? And then you get into this chapter about sex and it's just sort of like, what? <laughs> anybody relate? Anybody, anybody know this chapter I'm talking about? Um, there's a lot in there, and, and I won't go in, into a ton of depth with it, but what I love is that he brings together this concept, and he says that he had done some research and found some studies where they even studied people throughout history and throughout all of time, and those who were the most successful also had these developed sexual natures. They were in, um, in connection with that part of themselves. And I think that the world gets like sex and stuff so convoluted and twisted. And, you know, we all uh, maybe even as I'm sharing this, you might be feeling some like walls come up in your body. Just notice that like that's your sacred defense mechanism showing up, likely showing up for a good reason. Right. Because you you know that sex is such a sacred thing. And so many people are so quick to uh, tear it down and to tear you apart through sex. That's like. I mean, I've been raised in, that's just like the daily bread, right? It's like women just sell yourself through sex. and But then but then on the other side, it's like, but sex makes you so cheap. And then it's like, you should be very sexy and alluring. But on the other hand, it's like, but don't be a whore. Like, there's just so many messages. Am I right? We have to sort of like uh, do a lot of this pulling apart the cultural messages versus what's real and what's true and what's true for us. And so I come from this space where sex is very sacred. And then the next level, intimacy, which involves not just sex, but all those other layers of intimate closeness and connection. 
it's very sacred. And there are powers that we have not been able to access, likely because trauma, convolution of, of you know culture and society, all of these things, all of these things that disconnect us from the truth of intimacy, our truth, and our own sexual natures or our sensuality as women, our sensuality. One of the things that I love to share is, have you ever thought about the fact that women are the only mammal ever made with a pleasure organ? Just like let that sink in for a minute. We are made to be connected with our pleasure. Otherwise, why do we have a pleasure organ? We have that organ, not men. <laughs> Right, right? It's crazy, right? Um, so, 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 okay. I, I hopefully I've piqued your interest on some of these different things. I, I want to get in touch with you, you who are watching. Where are you at in your journey? Charlene shared, you know, single and wanting to attract like this beautiful power relationship. So like kudos to you with that because so, so many, even here in this group have said to me, that's just a fairy tale. Um, even even talking about marriage or or you know really promoting what I really promote is strong committed relationships, and I think marriage is a beautiful container for that. It doesn't have to be marriage necessarily, but it's a beautiful container for that. And I've had so many women say, you know, good luck selling chains to the free. <laughs> Um, to me, relationships help set me free. They don't chain me. And I have been in relationships that felt like I was being put in cages and chains. But I realized I was the one who hold, held the key every time, right? So, so great that, you know, you can go, I know this is what I want. Um, so, so powerful. Um, and, and what about the rest of you? Where are you at in relation to manifesting the things that you want in your life? Are you married? Are you and your husband doing some kind of um, business endeavor together? Are you, um, are you in a relationship and you really want to do a business endeavor together, but you don't? Are you the strong business um, drive and your husband is working like a nine to five, a J-O-B? Um, is it reverse? You're trying to get your business going. Your husband's a strong business owner. I'd love to hear in the comments. Where are you guys at with this? Uh, it's so challenging for me to show up and share these messages about intimacy. What I love more than anything is having one-on-one -on -one personal high-touch conversations with women because then I can like actually go, oh, there's so many layers and richness and depth. One of my biggest pet peeves is this whole like, you know, just follow step A, B, and C and you will get D results. Um, Cosmo Magazine, you know, it's like, oh, just do X, Y, and Z to have this explosive orgasm or to have the most intimate sex of your life or whatever. Like, it doesn't work that way. And so, I, you know, so I really have to tread lightly as I share these concepts here because I never want women to feel like I am putting them in boxes. That's what the whole world does to us. It puts us in these boxes and says, you have to do it this way. Um, and if you do it this way, you're going to have success. Well, then when you don't have that success, we're back to going, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with my relationship? What's wrong with my partner? Why isn't this working? Right? Um, so I'd love to hear in the comments, where are you? Why is this topic interesting to you? Okay. And then let's, um, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about now the possibility. We've talked about a lot of the different things that keep us from experiencing our true sensuality, that keep us from experiencing our true intimacy. Let's talk about now the possibility. And what keeps coming through for me, this is so surprising. I don't usually share this whole part of my story, but it keeps coming through. I'm like, I'm going to follow that intuition. I want to share my story with you. My husband and I went through horrible, horrible times. Our first five years of marriage were full of total disconnection. I probably lived the first 28 years of my life without intimacy, maybe slightly intimacy in pockets of time in my life. 
Um, first five years of marriage, so hard and no reason why. Every trail I followed was a dead end. Every Everything that I pursued to try to make things better in my marriage, it always pointed back to me. It was the only conclusion I could make. It must be my fault that things aren't better. And finally, my husband came to me and let me know that he had a secret addiction that he had kept from me the whole time. Um, and you can imagine, like, crap hit the fan at that point. <laughs> we separated for six months with three kids. It was so painful and so challenging, especially because I had put all of my eggs into the basket of my family. I was a stay-at-home mom, and we did that intentionally. We really, like, prayed about it, you know, felt into what felt right for our home, for our kids, for our personal situation. And that's what I was doing. Um, so I asked him to move out. <clears throat> I had no idea like what the extent of his addiction was. I didn't know if I was just giving him permission to go move in with a girlfriend or something. Like I really didn't know. I was just following my gut and my gut said we cannot continue this way. Lies, you know, all of it. I was diagnosed with PTSD. And then um, slowly we worked on things. Slowly we began to, um, you know... <laughs> Actually, this is so funny. Like giving this story, it's like you can't give it in a polished way. It was so unpolished. I was a wreck. I worked on me. I basically had to like surrender myself to the universe and say, God, show me who I am. I've been trying to do things this certain way and I cannot uh, figure out how to do this thing called life. I'm not fulfilled. I'm not happy. We're not experiencing connection. I put all my eggs in this basket. Now I have three kids looking up at me like, what am I supposed to do? And I felt like God was like, finally, Melissa, now I can show you who you really are. And I went on this magical journey and that began my personal development journey. So, and, and thankfully all along the way, my husband also started to choose himself, which is what I needed him to do. We always think we want our husbands to choose us, but when they're just choosing us, they fail over and over again. They have to choose themselves, right? Can I, can I get some snaps from that, you guys? And so, yeah, right, Charlene, you understand, huh? Mm-hmm. So I, I got to this point, two and a half years of this after he's moved back in, two and a half years of us, we're trying to grow, he moves back in, we're trying to come back together and every time it was like, boom, like, nope, okay, go back to your own lane and like work on yourself, this whole drawn out process. And um, finally, we kind of both look at each other. We would started to feel more comfortable. We had started to, it almost started to happen under our nose, even though we were fighting so hard. We were working so hard. It took so long. It doesn't have to take that long. Working so hard. But finally, one day we looked at each other and I was like, wait a minute. This is something I didn't even know existed. The kind of intimacy and closeness and connection that we're experiencing is something that I didn't even know was possible. I think I thought it was a fairy tale. I was working hard on a hope that I didn't even know what was at the end of the tunnel. And I was like, people need to know about this. People need to know. And that's when my coaching journey began. So, you know, just shortly after that is when I went into coaching certifications and went through all the stuff, right? And, and here I am today. But along that journey, we had to get the intimacy first. Through that whole journey, we were on medicated food stamps. We were so destitute. And I can remember so many times going to the grocery store, like holding my breath that we would have enough to be able to feed our family. It was so intense. But we got our intimacy right. And then I felt called no more to be a stay-at-home mom, but to start creating things, to start influencing the world, start serving people, right? And all along the way, Every time I hit a glass ceiling, I always know where I have to go is to intimacy in my marriage. 
And I do that. I go back. I look at my marriage. We sit down. We create together. We manifest together. And then I come back out into my into my business and I'm able to create my next level. This has been the case every single time. So from the very, very beginnings of me using my business to get us off of Medicaid and food stamps, like that was huge. It was so excruciating and terrifying to then the next level and then the next level and where we're at now. I have a six figure coaching business which so many people feel like is an impossibility. And we have big goals. We have a million dollar goal this year. My husband has come into the company with me and we coach people together. And I coach people on my own. And it's like dream come true, like mind blown dream come true, you guys. This is what I always wanted was an intimate partner by my side that knew me through and through, that we could go and like conquer the world together. That's what I always wanted. And so to turn around and then help others create that is the greatest joy of my life. So I just share all of that with you to say, this is the reality. And if you want to know the nuts and bolts and you want to be able to know what your next steps are to creating that intimacy, whether it's finding that partner that speaks to your soul or it's you know, in a, in a marriage where you've been together for years and years and you know that there's more for you and you're scared, you're scared to shake things up because the marriage is comfortable and it's nice and yet your heart continues to pull you forward. Sister, I know you. I know that place. And that's why I offer such a high touch, high level container. I'm right there with you every step of the way. So if this is resonating with you and there's something in your gut that's saying like, I do want to know more. I do want to talk to Melissa. I do want to know what my next steps are in terms of deepening intimacy. Then set up a phone call with me. You can reach out, you can DM me, or I'll go ahead and put my link in the comments as soon as I'm finished here. And we'll just set up a quick 15 minute call. That's where we start. 15 minutes. So it's very low risk. I love you know, it's so funny. This is like such a false intimacy, right? Like I'm here, I'm, I'm experiencing intimacy with myself into me see, and I am exposing that and sharing my heart and soul with you guys. But you know, I can't see you. I don't know you on the other side of the screen, like it's such a false intimacy, like a pseudo intimacy, right? I want a real intimacy with you. I want to see you see your heart and soul. And then help you to, um, you know, uncover, birth out your dreams and identify what your next steps are to creating those. So let's get on a call together. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I love you. And may women everywhere experience that fullness and depth of intimacy. Not just because it's a nice idea and even not just because it's our birthright, but because the world, the changes in the world right now need us, need us to be in our fullness so that we can manifest our reality so that we can go out and impact the people we're meant to impact. Okay. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.